Large crowds are terrifying and dangerous occurrences. As such, they require careful management. When a large group of people start moving, the individual loses their autonomy to the flow of the mass. So much so that when modelling large group movements, the mass is treated like a fluid, which I personally find is absolutely terrifying. There have been multiple crowd disasters in history, and our story today is one of history's most recent. Not only is it recent, but it is the most deadly civil disaster in the country in which it occurred. Our story today takes place at a religious site in Mount Meron, Israel. Over just 10 minutes, a deadly crush would result in 45 lives lost and over 100 severely injured. Welcome to Plenty Difficult. Today, we'll be looking at the 2021 Meron Crowd Crush. This video wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for my Patreon and YouTube members. If you'd like to watch my videos early and ad free, then why don't you give it a crack? Also, please subscribe as you know the whole YouTube algorithm got to love that. A holy site. Israel is covered by holy sites from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre to the Wailing Wall. Followers of the Jewish, Christian and Muslim faiths all have important sites within the country. I'm not going to get too much into the religious side of things here. I'm a Quaker by faith, so don't have too much skin in the whole game. This aside, our story today, the holy site and disaster area, is a predominantly Jewish pilgrimage location. Interestingly, it is the second most viewed Jewish site in the world behind the West Wall. This is the tomb of the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It has been a pilgrimage site since at least the 13th century. Now I won't go too much into the rabbi's life. I did try reading up on him, but I got very confused very quickly. Over the centuries, the tomb became an increasingly popular pilgrimage site to celebrate Lag Laomer. The date is associated with multiple events in Jewish history, including a celebration of the end of a plague, the Bar Kokhba revolt, and of course the death of Shimon Bar Yochai. There have been a couple of mausoleums built over the site of Shimon's tomb, starting with the first recorded structure in the 16th century. However, for today's story, the current complex associated with Shimon's tomb was built in the 19th century. Now being a Victorian era structure, it wasn't the best for crowd management. Do a lot of people visit during Lag Baoma? Tens of thousands of people, up to hundreds of thousands of people attend in which bonfires are set on the roof of the mausoleum. Not only that, but celebrations include songs, dancing, feasting and ceremonial first haircuts for boys. Four different sects occupy different areas of the complex during Lag Baoma. This leads to issues, as there's no real chain of command in managing the site during the celebration. Due to the vast numbers of attendees, the site has to be managed correctly. Just like any other mass gathering, accidents can happen. One such at the site was in 1911, where at least seven people died from a collapsed balcony. The site had a pinch point when exiting and entering the Taudot Arong compound. Pilgrims had to navigate a narrow passage paved with metal flooring, which ended in a concrete staircase. This was all on quite a steep angle, and there was a very sharp right angle turn just before the staircase. The passage was created, as stated in Jerez.com, the Taudos Aron ultra-Orthodox sect illegally created the path some 20 years ago to enable entry to the Mount Moron compound without coming into contact with women. The site is a little bit lawless in the sense that no renovation or control of infrastructure is allowed to the state. Instead, each religious sect pretty much does what they like in their area. The sects make up a part of the ultra-Orthodox community in Israel known as the Heredi community. They hold quite a bit of political power and are very insular to the rest of Israeli society and over the years had successfully held on to the status quo of self-management of the site. Even though it was a bit of a death trap with poorly built buildings, tiny passageways and haphazard crowd control measures, all of which crammed around a Victorian era mausoleum and needless to say, a disaster would be inevitable. The disaster. 
So 2021 was a strange time for the whole world, being a year into the sounding like the name of the Crow family virus. Understandably, such a large mass gathering as the Mount Meron celebrations would require some greater government control to stop a super spreader event. Some of the Haredi community had largely ignored COVID controls in Israel because of its limiting numbers at Mount Meron was a monumental task. Any change to the celebrations, especially from the state, would often be met with a lot of resistance and complaints. The government proposed a plan to limit the total numbers allowed into the site to between 9 and 10,000 people. However, this plan wasn't implemented. The date Bag Laoma fell onto was the 29th of April 2021. This was after some of Israel's COVID controls had been lifted. As such, much more than the proposed 10,000 would turn up. However, the site had been fenced off into sections. This would reduce the numbers of people that could gather. It is the evening of the 29th of April 2021 and the celebrations are in full swing. Up to 100,000 people are in the area near the Mount Meron complex. The Taudot Aran area has an estimated 20,000 people crammed into their fenced area. The event this year is over the Thursday into the Friday. Because of this, the celebrations would have to end before the Jewish Sabbath, which starts at sunset every Friday. The side effect of this was that the window for celebrations was limited in 2021 to around 14 hours. Because of this, the bonfires were lit in much closer succession than had been in previous years, thus not allowing adequate time for different areas to dissipate their participants. The passageway and staircase away from the area, you know the one with the metal flooring, had become slippery from spilled drinks from the thousands of pilgrims navigating through it throughout the evening. Shortly before 1am on the 30th, some pilgrims had begun to leave the Taudot Aron area, but by 12.44am the event had finished and the larger part of the participants started to exit. Within moments, hundreds of people were crowding the slippery and steep downhill gradient towards the stairway. As each second ticked past, and more people entered the area, by 12.47am the crowd was now becoming a crush. A few people had slipped and were on the ground being trampled by the unstoppable mass of human bodies. All the way up until now there had been no real police or security presence to help with the crowd. People on the edge of the stairway started ripping off the hoarding surrounding the passageways, trying to escape the crush. The weight of the people coming down the slope put pressure on the concrete wall at the 90 degree turn up to the staircase and this suffocated some of those who were trapped. The police began tearing away more and more barriers creating more makeshift exits. Loud hailer messages shouted out for the crowd to disperse and eventually the police ordered a full evacuation of the site. Once the crowd was dispersed enough, emergency workers began to treat the victims. Rescue vehicles found access to the site very difficult as some of the roads leading there had been blocked off. On top of that, many attendees refused to leave when asked to by local authorities. A makeshift field hospital was set up nearby with Israeli police and IDF soldiers helping evacuate victims. First responders on the passageway frantically administered CPR to victims, but unfortunately 45 would be dead. In addition to the deaths, over 150 people were injured, requiring some 250 ambulances to attend and six helicopters to be brought in as well. The event made worldwide news and put the country of Israel into shock. Having such a large number of deaths raised the important questions of how and why. Interestingly, the estimated attendance of between 50 and 100,000 people was lower than the multiple hundreds of thousands that had attended in previous years. Well, it would turn out disaster was seemingly only a matter of time for Mount Moran. The aftermath. So, with 45 deaths, an investigation would have to happen. The Taudot Aran sect announced that their annual Simshat Beit Hashova would be closed to the public to avoid overcrowding. On the 30th of April, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited the site and announced that the Sunday will be a day of mourning. He announced that a thorough investigation will be conducted. 
the lag for Omer celebrations for the next year would be drastically different. A limit of four hours per visitor was enacted, along with making the event ticketed to reduce overall numbers at one time. In addition, a heavier police and military presence was brought in to help with crowd control and emergency responses. But how did the disaster come to be? Well, a number of investigations and case studies would come from the crush, as it offered a unique opportunity to learn about the dangers of crowd controls. Initially, Shomon Lavi, the police commander of the Northern District, said he bears full responsibility. But the disaster runs deeper than just that. The lack of oversight on the site as a whole bears a lot of blame. You see, the passageway wasn't built within planning approval and thus didn't follow code. Over the years, the site had raised multiple concerns with various governing bodies. In 2008, an evaluation of the site by the State Comptroller of Israel found it not safe for its number of visitors. Around 2011, the government appointed religious official Rabbi Shamuel Rabinowitz tried to make the site safer. However, he met resistance as stated in the New York Times. Anything you did angered everyone. Everything you did to make things better brought with it complaints. Rabonowitz had resigned from his role for a number of years after these complaints. Multiple more reports over the years of bottlenecks and choke points in the site fell on deaf ears of officials. In June of 2021, the government cabinet, who had recently been elected, approved the creation of a free member commission led by Miriam Nawal. The commission would return their results roughly two and a half years later. It would not be good for some officials. It would scold Netanyahu for his inaction to change the site's safety issues, even though he would have known about the problems. The commissioner said, as stated in the Times of Israel, There is a reasonable basis to conclude that Netanyahu knew that the site of the rabbi's grave was improperly dealt with for years and that it was liable to be danger to the masses that visit the site, especially on Lag Ba'omer. Although damning, the commissioner didn't recommend any type of legal ramifications for the now back in power Prime Minister. Police Chief Yaakov Shapti was also pointed at for blame. He accepted the commission's findings, however wasn't dismissed due to the war in Gaza. The disaster shouldn't have been a shock to anyone. Just looking at the passageway gives me chills, and I think the commission even put this in the best way, again from the Times of Israel. The writing was on the wall well before the disaster, written in big block letters, in a clear, sharp way, but were not paid attention to. Many of the findings in the report were open and known to all. The terrible result that it could lead to was known. Very damn well put, I must say. So that's my video on the Mount Meron disaster. I do apologise for my butcherings of some pronunciations. So it's disaster scale time. I'm going to be putting it as a 4 in line with some of the other crowd disasters I've covered. And this is what I've got for my root cause analysis card. Do you agree? This is a Plainly Difficult production. All videos on the channel are Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike License. Plainly Difficult, video, plainly difficult videos are produced by me, John the currently cold corner of southern london uk and all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching and mr music play us out please